So the hour hand has a particular position when it tells us o'clock time. So tell me about the minute hand. The Catholic education system in Victoria is a big complex business. It employs nearly 24,000 people with an annual wages bill of around $1.5 billion. In the last bargaining over an enterprise agreement, the negotiations stalled. We'd got to a point where neither party was prepared to give much ground and things weren't progressing very well. We had the start of the next school year looming, so both parties agreed that we need someone else to step in and give us a hand so that we could get an agreement settled. We both came to the conclusion at the same time that going to Fair Work was going to be the, the way that we're going to best move forward um, and I have no doubt whatsoever that that'll be an element of bargaining um, long into, as long into the future as we have a Fair Work. The Catholic education system is an unusual industrial relations environment. There's about 488 schools, but more importantly, there are about 320 separate employers that make up those 488 schools. The majority of them are parish priests, and so they're in charge of the primary school, they're the employer. The major issue is that there are so many of them. The main thing that'll go wrong is that one side or the other will become locked into a position because of the large number of people, the big audience that they're working to. The worst part is that people end up, because there's such a broad range of negotiations that have to go on to formulate people's positions, that they end up locked into a position on a particular issue. Teachers' salaries follow those in the state sector, but salaries and conditions for the many support staff are negotiated during the enterprise bargaining. Well, there are a number of issues in terms of, for example, um, the management of performance and conduct for employees, things around changes to personal leave, a number of matters that we were seeking, but then on the other side, they were also seeking a number of matters which we weren't prepared to concede on either. Um, there were quite a few. Um, the performance management uh, processes in the agreement were, uh, were a major sticking point. Um, some of the um, breaks and hours issues uh, were, were really uh, difficult matters to deal with. Um, so, yeah, there were some quite big issues. The Fair Work Commission held a series of conferences with the parties over several months chaired by Commissioner Bissett. It was a change in process. There are 70 clauses and eight appendices and 10 salary schedules. So the Commissioner didn't work through every one of those, but she did help us to work through the key issues, which then gave us the way forward to us sitting down and resolving all those other matters. She really just tested the parties um, on their positions. She was quite creative. She's got a good knowledge of the industry, so she was quite creative and had uh, good suggestions to make to us about how to um, try to break deadlocks and how to um, creatively think about our positions um, and come back, um, always come back testing us about positions that were entrenched. This is where the Commissioner was very helpful in terms of we could each identify six key issues that we wanted to talk about, then we would pick one. We would provide our viewpoint on that issue, the Union would then provide their viewpoint, then the Commissioner would talk to us jointly, as I said give us a bit of a reality check sometimes, and then also separate ours so we could talk separately with her and then try and come together with a what was common and what we could resolve that was still un under dispute. The other difficulty that we, that we faced with that was that, that um, sometimes we found the employer locked onto a particular draft of, of, a, um, of a clause and she was always creative about ways to, to move people, to make them a little more fluid about their negotiating position. Without Commissioner Bissett's assistance, and she was pretty firm with both of us and wouldn't take much nonsense, is that without her assistance, we probably wouldn't have been able to get to an agreement. If we hadn't had that assistance, we may still well be at the bargaining table. <laughs> I think it's quite possible we'd still be there. Um, I, there's absolutely no chance that we would have got the outcome that we, that we did get um, without the intervention of the Commission at that time, um, in that time frame. Also having her involved and her generous commitment of time and things, it enabled the whole approval process to be very quick and very smooth in terms of um, we were able to lodge and within seven days we had the approval from the Commission, which helped with implementation so that people in our schools got their back pay, 
got their sign-on bonus. Um, I think it was a really good outcome. Uh, it was a you know difficult bargaining environment. All of the wages for the for the uh, non-teaching staff, all of the support staff, uh, were at issue, and we ended up with very good results in those areas. Good increases for those people, and really good outcomes in some of the other areas as well. So things like performance management processes and breaks and arrangements of hours, really good outcomes. We have close to 24,000 employees covered by this agreement and we got a 99% yes vote for our agreement. Which, So I suppose that gives some endorsement that the agreement is a fair agreement and the process was good. Mm -hmm.